Hello everyone, welcome to uh, my latest video on calculating parametric VR. In this video I am creating specifically for NISM portfolio managers exam. As you know, uh, there are questions asked on uh, calculation of parametric VR in NISM portfolio managers exams. In order to help you all score uh, relevant marks uh, for such questions, I have prepared this video. Uh, let me explain to you in stepwise manner how to calculate parametric VR. But prior to that, I would like to explain the concept of value at risk. So value at risk is a statistical measure of estimated potential loss. Uh, what is the uh, what is the concept of value at risk uh, in simple terms? Uh, let me explain that first. So value at risk, as the word itself says, how much value is at risk for uh, of an X portfolio or an investment? That is what we are calculating when uh, when we calculate value at risk. So value at risk estimates uh, how much a set of investments will lose over a period of time at a given level of confidence. So we are basically calculating the expected loss for a given confidence level over a period of time. The period of time may vary. It could be one day, three days, five days, seven days, two days, four days. You know, it could be any potential day. And the confidence level also will vary. Typically, VAR is calculated at 99% 90, level of confidence, but you can also calculate VAR at 95, 68, 90% level of confidence. VAR is calculated uh, you know, uh, using different methods. We have historical VAR, parametric VAR, and Monte Carlo simulation. In this video, I am only talking about parametric VAR. So what is parametric VAR? Parametric approach to VAR uses basically mean variance analysis to predict future outcomes based on past experience. So basically whatever has been the past event or past data, we use that and arrive at what should be the VR. The parametric VR calculation is straightforward, but makes the assumption that possible outcomes are normally distributed about the mean. So this is basically based on the concept of normal distribution. Uh, and that is uh, uh, that is the building block or the um, basic uh, assumption of parametric VR. Let me take you to the NISM uh, sheet that you will uh, or the page that you will come across where the concept of parametric VR has been explained with the help of an example. As you can see here, we have a very clear cut example that I would like to highlight. Uh, in this particular example, there is a formula which has been given for calculating the VR which is this formula as you can see here. So I'm just highlighting the formula. So in this formula, we have to work on um, three variables basically. Uh, the first variable is what is the return of the portfolio. So here also, if you see this sheet very clearly says that we have to work on two variables to arrive at VR. One is the expected return and second is the standard deviation. Now expected return data is given in terms of uh, you know annual percentage. So is the standard deviation data which has been given in terms of annual percentage. Now if you have to work on one day VR, you have to convert the expected return from annual to daily, uh, both in case of standard deviation as well as expe expected return. And then after that, what you have to do is that you have to see what is the confidence interval which is applicable. So here the confidence interval is 99%. And the confidence uh, interval statistic is 2.33. So you have to you have to use this data also, which is 2.33, and then we can reach at portfolio VR of 2.89%. The 2.89% is the expected loss in the portfolio value, which you can see here as the 100 million. Okay, so from this 100 million, we are uh, calculating a 2.89% loss, and that should be 2. Point equivalent to 2.89. Similarly, when you work on 95% level of confidence, all other variables will remain same, but the uh, you know the confidence uh, level statistics will change to 1.96, because of which we have a different answer. And similarly. At 90% level of confidence, this variable will become 1.65. So we have to remember this. Now let, let me show you how the answer has been arrived at in this particular case. So to find out the answer, we have an Excel sheet which I am explaining to you. 
In this Excel sheet, the annual return has been given as 15%, which we have taken from the previous example itself. 15% uh, is divided by 250 and we have found the daily return. So if you write in Excel 15% upon 250, you will get this much percentage return. If you are getting the values in number, convert them into percentage either by multiplying by 100 or there is an option in the Excel to convert number into percentage that you can work on. Then there is an annual standard deviation also given in this particular problem. The annual standard deviation is 20%. Now how do I convert it into daily standard deviation? So we write 20 upon SQRT of 250. Now why 250? Because we are taking number of days in the year to be 250. In some textbooks it could be 250. In many of the textbook it is 252 also. Why 250 and 252? That is important to know. 250 are the working days or the trading days on which the trade happens. So uh, some calculations consider 250 days and some calculations consider 252 days. So you can check your answer with both the uh, both the days. Here I have taken 250 days. So if you write equal to 20% uh, SQRT of 250, then you'll get 1.26 as the answer. Now we know that we are using the confidence interval of 99%, which has been actually written as 95% here. Ideally, uh, we should have written it as 99. So let me just make it 99 so that you know we are on the uh, same page. Okay, so this is 99% that we have, not 95%. Confidence level statistic would be 2.33. So once we have confidence level statistic as 2.33, then we have three data points. So what is it, how is it that we have arrived at the solution? We have taken EP as 0.06 minus Z score which is 2.33 multiplied by Sigma of the portfolio which is the value which we have 1.26. So let me repeat what we did. The EP value that we have we are taking this to be the EP value. So this is what you will consider. The Z score value that we have here the Z score value has to be 2.33. So the Z score value is this and the Sigma P value which we have calculated for the daily uh, portfolio risk will be this value and the portfolio value you can take it as 100 million and then arrive at the answer okay so this is how you calculate never forget to convert uh, you know annual returns into daily returns by dividing it by exclusive number of days which is mentioned either 250 or 252 and when you are calculating the daily standard deviation then use the concept of annual standard deviation upon SQRT of 250. Now, since we have arrived at the portfolio VR of 2.89%, it is similar as what we saw in the example on the previous slide, okay? So this is how you calculate the parametric VAR. I hope uh, this was useful for you and any question that you get with respect to parametric VAR, you will be able to solve it uh, because you have seen this particular video. If you feel that this is not good enough or you would like me to provide some other explanation related to this concept, please do put it in the comments uh, section. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please like my video and subscribe to my video. Thank you.